Now, the Circular Cup initiative, I want you to listen to Julie Hoy. I'm going to be speaking to Julie in just a, a second. And um, it sounds like a really good idea, this. This is the presentation video. So during the pandemic, I used to walk up and down the street and the bins were overflowing with single-use coffee cups. And it got me thinking, I'm about to open a refill store, a cafe and event space here in Lisburn. And we were determined that when we opened, we wouldn't be adding to that mountain of single-use plastic waste. I was exploring what we could do and I found a company that makes returnable cups and that has piloted them all over the world. But Northern Ireland still hasn't piloted this. We're really excited about working with 10 other local businesses who are all part of the Chamber of Commerce here to have a coffee cup scheme that allows people to grab a cup of coffee when they want it uh, without it costing the earth. Without it costing the earth is a very good way of describing it. Uh, Julie, good morning. Good morning, Frank. Uh, Thank you for coming on the programme. Uh, Julie, first of all, tell us about where you're based and how you came up with the idea or why you were motivated to come up with this project. Well, thanks, Frank. I'm calling you today from um, sunny Lisburn. Um, This is my home city and I'm really proud of it. And as part of that, I'm part of the Chamber of Commerce team and we're a bunch of uh, business owners and uh, people in the in the city and the city region who really care about the city and want uh, the voice of businesses in, in the Lisburn area to be heard about all sorts of things, including sustainability, uh, sustainability as it relates to the environment, but also in these days where, where costs are rising, the sustainability for, for business uh, with rising costs. So you're you're going to be are you as part of your project or part of your work? Do you sell coffee? What's the what's the link between you and all those coffee shops? Well, um, as you've just heard, um, I'm part of a cooperative team who are opening um, Sonus, which is uh, Lisbon's first refill grocer, uh, cafe, and event space. We're hoping to open uh, later this year, and from that, we were really really keen that we wouldn't use single use coffee cups. So. I've been thinking about solutions and researching about this, and then I heard about the UK Climate Challenge Fund, which is, has been administered here in Northern Ireland by Live Here, Love Here, who are an amazing group of people, just so enthusiastic and keen to make a difference and help people connect with the, 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 the really urgent conversation around climate change and around uh, carbon and, and what the impact of um, better decisions would have uh, on our environment, which of course matters so much to us. You know, we do lots of farming, and we are um, we live in a beautiful country, so we want to to keep it beautiful. So um, we applied for funding. I applied for funding for the Chamber of Commerce for this um, this scheme, and also uh, for Sonus, our shop. And live here, love here. Preferred the one for the Chamber because they wanted to see uh, what would happen if if a city like ours, you know, a small compact city, takes on this project and tries it out so that other places in Northern Ireland and beyond could learn from this pilot project and perhaps um, uh, replicate it elsewhere in Northern Ireland. So they asked us to do something quite unusual, which is they gave us funding for Sonus and funding for the Chamber of Commerce. And we put that together to bring together a pilot program, which is going to run for about six months from starting in September. Um, And it's it's one city, 10 cafes and thousands of single-use cups are going to be saved from landfill even as part of the pilot and we're really excited about it because with this funding it's allowed us to provide this as um, a free service for uh, businesses to try Um, it also allows us to offer businesses really 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 um, engaging uh, carbon literacy uh, training and, and advice about how to to, to do business more sustainably. And it just puts Lisburn on the map. And we love Lisburn and we want more people uh, to know about us and what we're doing to make Lisburn uh, a better place to live, work and play. Yeah, it, it, it certainly uh, every initiative is to be applauded if it's going to uh, make people more environmentally aware. But but I think you'll need to explain to, to me uh, uh, and maybe to some other uh, people the, the concept of your of your own store, the event space. I understand, but the the refill is this one of these shops that doesn't package anything. You have to bring your own bags to to refill it. Explain to me what you mean by a, a refill centre. 
way, way back, some of you, uh, some of the folk who are the same age as me and perhaps a bit older will remember when we didn't have packaged food and when we were able to buy what we needed rather than buy the size that the supermarkets want to give to us. And this is just an opportunity to allow people to access foods without packaging, without plastic packaging, that at the moment, most of it can't be recycled. So we're allowing people uh, the opportunity to do that. Yes, um, you can bring your own containers, you can bring your own jam jars, your own uh, um, bags and and boxes and things like that. But we'll also provide those um, for people who either just want to shop on a whim or just have forgotten. Uh, It's a new way of shopping for many people. For, For others, it's a return to how life used to be. And it's a, a type of shopping that we're um, looking at reshaping and making um, relevant for, for today's consumer. And what, what do you sell? Do you sell all sorts of food stuff or do you go beyond well, that? Well, we're going to, we're going to sell, uh, yes, food stuff. To start with, we're going to have lots of what we call dry foods. So things like pasta and uh, cereals and rice and uh, nuts and uh you know, baking ingredients, so different flours. We'll have gluten-free products. We'll have um, products that are hard to actually find elsewhere in Lisburn um, or products that you have to buy a large amount on Amazon in order uh, to get them delivered to your home. So we're trying to create that. But we'll also sell uh, products like olive oils and maple syrup and honey, and we'll have vinegars and uh, different types of liquids. But we'll also have um, household cleaning um, materials that, that are kind um, to the environment but effective in your home and we'll also have um, things like toiletries and shampoo and things like that so that you can refill um, containers that you have at home so that you can try new products and we're going to make sure that many, many, many of our products are local that they're distinctive from what else is offered but also that they're going to be um, effective um, it's all very well saving the environment, but it's incredibly important that um, the products that we sell um, work and are the kind of things that people will come back to buy. So we'll be selling those and we'll be selling things like um, eggs and milk and bread uh, from local uh, producers who care about um, the work that they do and care about the environment and the way that they work. We'll also be uh, producing things like our own up milks and oat milks and nut butters and nut milks. Um, and really seeking to delight people with flavours and tastes that um, they haven't tasted before. So we're going to have uh, loose fresh fruit and vegetables, but we'll have we'll have uh, those made into things like smoothies and smoothie bowls, but also really good salads that um, tickle the taste buds and uh, get us all eating our greens, not because uh, they're good for us, but because they taste so good. Yeah, well, you're, you're obviously not the first to do it, but you certainly are ticking the modern box with uh, those uh, with that particular range. As for the circular cups, have you got any of the big names on board, or is it impossible to get the multinationals on board when it comes to coffee cup changes? Well, Frank, I guess. From a chamber perspective, we're we're all about Lisburn. So we have we have the big chains. We have uh, we have Nero and we have Costa and we have the local ones, Bob and Bert's and and Grind. And we'd love them to join in, but we know for them that's a, a longer and more complicated decision making process than it is for the likes of us in Sonas, for the Daily Apron, for Percival's, for Crema, for Second Avenue, for Glass House, uh, for the Crafty Hound and. Uh, that our local college here are also going to take part. Um, these are the kind of, of businesses who are part of our chamber who, who believe in investing in where they trade and work um, and have been um, supportive members of the chamber. And this is a way of us giving back to them, giving them a chance at no cost to them to try out this uh, technology. The firm that we're using, uh, the Cups from, is an amazing company called Circular & Co. They're based in Cornwall. They've done uh, pilots across the world with the likes of McDonald's and Tim Hortons and others. So we're not using a product that hasn't been thought through and developed at the highest level. But we're starting local, uh, and we think it's something distinctive to do something um, uh, within Lisburn with our local independent cafes who have owners who... Uh, often greet you and make coffee for you, uh, as opposed to the the big corporates who who don't do that. They do what they do well, and uh, working 
uh, to talk to them if they want to get involved too. Of course. And, and finally, I ask you this because it's just so relevant to me last Saturday. I was in Lisbon and I was, just to be direct and straight about this, I was, I was surprised by how few people there were in Lisbon last Saturday at approximately lunchtime. The, the shops seemed empty and the, the room to walk seemed immense. I wasn't bumping into anyone. It's, it, it, how, do I, how, do I best yeah. phrase, how do I best phrase this? It almost saddened me to think that one of our cities had so few people in it during a major shopping set of ours on a Saturday. Is there, is there a problem? Is there a problem with Lisbon? Because later on, on the, on the way back, I, went, I was at and found the product I needed at uh, Sprucefield. And, you know, I went to Lisbon for it, but I bought it at Sprucefield. So is, is there, is there a, from a Chambers perspective, is there a problem there with the city? I don't think there's a problem with the city and um, that any other city is not going through at the moment. If you go to Belfast, if you go to uh, cities on the mainland, you will see um, the impact of the pandemic and you'll see the impact of the, the rise in the cost of living as people start to think more um, um, consciously about what they're going to buy. And as people um, who run businesses are also experiencing massive increases in um, the, the cost of ingredients and the cost of power. It's, it's a tough time to be doing business. It's a tough time uh, to be living through. But I believe that when we spend money locally, it brings huge benefits to the local economy. It stays in the local economy. It pays for uh, people's wages. It also tends to get spent uh, locally. And it's a really important thing. And Frank, I'm really sorry because I actually was in in Lisbon on Saturday at lunchtime too and I would love to have met you uh, <laughs> I remember you from way back and you pay, you played requests for me way way back but um, I think I think one of the things that um, we need to we need to remember is that we need to um, embody um, a sense of excitement and that's what we're all about and, and the retailers in Lisbon who are part of the Chamber of Commerce but the Chamber is for all sorts of businesses we've got Coca-Cola we've got Ethergy who are sustainability experts and um, I'm just telling you about them because we're actually holding a, a sustainability revolution event um, on the 7th of September at the Linen Centre and we'd love to see any of your listeners along who are interested uh, in, in looking at, at sustainability for their business but absolutely we're, we're full of enthusiasm, we're full of hope and expectation that things will get better but we need everyone to join in and we need everyone to speak well of the place that they live of course, and we need people okay. To spend a fiver each week yeah. in their local town, and I hope people will do that. Yeah, no, I, I did actually spend some money. I need to emphasise in, in this one, even though I didn't get the actual product that I was looking for. I did. I did go into a couple of little stores because I'll tell you there are so many quaint shops there. And if you haven't been to Lisbon recently, there is mm. a, there's a, a wide variety. Of, of shops and certainly you won't be killed in the rush you know going from one store to the other and for many people that is a plus that is a plus so they, they will find it a pleasant shopping experience and maybe now that we're talking about it the footfall will actually in, increase but I did notice one very annoyed person and that was a woman from Enniskillen who was actually in town to buy a hat for a wedding and she had gone along to the, I think the, the store was called the Hat Shop. She was very close to the Hat Shop in, in Lisbon, yeah. which was beside um, quite a, a large, and one of the stores I did go into was, I think, I think it's called Irvine's, a very large shoe shop, which was uh, an excellent, uh, ex, 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 excellent store. Uh-huh. Have, yes. I got, have I got the right name there? I think I do have the right name. I think you're talking about Reeds. Re yeah. Reeds, Reeds. That's the one. That's the one that they just up from, yeah, beside the linen, just across from the linen museum. That's right. That's that, correct. Right. That's near our shop. Yeah. So, so to, to get back to the, to the main point, this woman was beside herself because she had come down from Enniskillen to get a hat for a wedding. And she parked her car and she went into that hat shop and she was coming across the road or whatever, but she was, ah, oh, she was, oh, for goodness sake. And the red coat had given her a ticket. Now, she said, like, 
gosh, how can they expect people to come here to shop if you're going to get fined for parking? And I was thinking, my argument was, well, it is well signposted there. You know, I didn't have a conversation with her. I was just listening to her giving off. She, she was, you know, she was making the point that she had to, you know, now pay a fine of forty-five pounds, but for fifty p or whatever, she could have, she could have paid to park. Now she didn't, in fairness, see the signage. She presumed those bays were all free because they're. She was saying, I think it was Anna Skill, and she said they were free in her hometown. And why, why do you have to pay for them in Lisburn? But I did notice the the, the the red coat the, the red the red coat. He was he, if there's a if there's a medal if there's a medal for giving out tickets, he'll get it because I was watching him. He was the most diligent, and you know, you, you, other towns would other towns would give anything to have a member of staff as diligent as the red coat in in Lisbon. He was outstanding. I was almost applauding him. He was giving out so many tickets and checking so so many cars. But is it an advantage or a disadvantage to have very well structured paid for parking? Well, um, I I think that the lady from Enniskill, and I'm so sorry that that was her experience. We know that many people um, have had that experience and that's not been a good experience. We, along with Newry and Belfast, are the only uh, place where we're not able to offer um, free short short stay car parking uh, on 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 the street um, everywhere else is. And the chamber has been lobbying um, government for um, I think a year and a half to two years on this issue. And we're really hopeful that uh, we will resolve it uh, soon. We as traders feel that it's unhelpful. And we feel that it um, uh, needs to change. Um, the council offer car parking in their all their car parks um, one pound for three hours, and uh, there's lots of friendly people in Lisburn. So if you ever come and you're worried about whether you've parked in the right place or not, just ask someone, and they'll give you advice. Yeah, I didn't find it difficult. I looked at the sign and it told me, you know, you park as twenty p for so many minutes, and you know, I I parked with the the app, and when I came back, it cost me 60 pence so I didn't find it I didn't find it difficult to pay it but I probably had some sympathy for the woman who just didn't read the sign or see the sign or presumed that it would be the same as Anna Skillen I wasn't aware that there were so few uh, towns it's just um, Belfast, Lisbon what was the other one you mentioned? Newry. Newry. Newry as well. Gosh, shame yeah. on you, Newry. You're still paying for parking there along not, the roads. <laughs> well, it's, not, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with Newry. It's to do with, um, uh, to do with legislation that uh, we, need, we need changed. And we'd love people to support our campaign to see that changed. Uh, we want to create as wide a welcome and as warm a welcome as possible uh, to people in Lisburn. But notwithstanding that, uh, there is a warm welcome. To Lisburn, and we'd love to have you there. Whether you need shop mobility, uh, that's based in Bow Street Mall, so that everyone can get around the city uh, uh, safely and easily. But there, we also have City Watch, which means that we have a really safe city, um, and uh, we also have uh, a number of other initiatives that mean our businesses work really well together, and we speak well of each other, and we love to welcome new people. So come and find out more about what's going on in Lisburn. You have a very quaint city. When you walk around it, you realise just how cute it is and the little, the little tiny shops that are very appealing as well as the you know more established more established stores. So if you haven't been to Lisburn for a while, get yourself down to it. That's what I say. Just finally, Julie, where exactly are you so people can check you out? So we are the Chamber of Commerce and obviously we're in Lisburn, but our shop, Sonus, which is um, Irish for well-being and happiness, we are... Um, because that's what we want to bring. We're in Market Square, just uh, near the Linen Museum opposite Smith Patterson. Uh, and we'd love to welcome you there when we open later this year. Lovely so. job, lovely job. Uh, Julie, a real invitation there to Lisbon uh, from, from you. And uh, thank you, thank you indeed. And anytime you need a request played on the radio, give me a shout. <laughs> I'm delighted oh, to, to, to say that I did that back in the day, back in the day. Julie Hoy um, from Lisbon. Th- thank you. Thanks for coming on the programme. Not at all. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Frank. So there you go. Uh, Lisbon, if you haven't been in it, get yourself to it.